All right, hey everyone, my name is Fiona, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I would practice a piece if I had an hour to work on something. Uh, I'm gonna be using the Rachmaninoff Second Piano Concerto just because that's one of the pieces that I brought, and I'm in Iceland right now. And it's not every day that I get to play on $150,000 Hamburg Steinway. So I wanted to show you kind of my practice protocol and what I do when I'm practicing. So. Um, be prepared to hear mistakes, and this isn't going to be perfect, but I'm going to show you and kind of break down certain things that I kind of uh, work on when I'm practicing. Okay, since I'm going to just focus on the first movement for this, I actually go to the very end of a piece. It's better if you can get, as you're going through, it's better if you can go through a piece and get stronger as you're going through it. Usually when people start a piece, they'll just play it from the beginning, they'll start from the beginning, from the beginning, from the beginning, and they never really reach the end. So the end actually gets played the least. So I actually like to start at the very end. So I'm starting at the very, the second to last measure. And I really make sure I grab those chords. from there. Um, I could either take it by line, line by line, or uh, measure by measure. Uh, I'm not going to go full full tempo, but I'm just going to, you know, keep it steady. I don't want this to be, you know, like tedious and boring. I have to be so invested and so like interested in hearing these harmonies um, because that's the best way you're going to learn. If you're interested and you want to learn, that's going to be the best way, the most effective way to kind of practice. So don't practice if you're feeling like you have to practice or you, you feel obligated. You want to practice when you feel um, inspired to practice. So usually if I'm listening to a piece of music, I feel inspired. I'm like, I want to go play the piano right now. So, um, okay, so I'm going to work backwards. Um... to the 30, 30th time of playing that um, 
playing that in, uh, in sequence and you make a mistake, you have to start all over again. So <laughs> I'm not going to take that, that much time, I only have an hour, but um, that's what my teacher recommends. <laughs> progression and you got a, a cadence, right? Chord progression, cadence. Um, and so what Rachmaninoff is doing is going from this chord to this chord. Sorry. This chord to this chord to this chord to this chord to this chord. practicing this for like a three hour chunk, I would just go measure, you know, measure before, measure before to the end, uh, next measure to the end and stuff like that. Um, in this case, I'm going to kind of chunk it. So I'm going to go from line, 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 line. And I'm just going to focus on this page. is that sometimes you have to kind of pick up in the middle of a conversation and you have to kind of like, okay, how does this kind of fit into the bigger picture of, of this piece? Um, whereas if you're starting from the beginning, it's like, okay, I kind of know where the piece is developing, how it's um, going to unfold. If I have to start, you know, at a random spot on the page, it's a lot more tricky, but it's good to do that. It's good for our brains to do that. So.
not letting my finger kind of bend inward like this. This tends to happen on a lot of pianists. Um, so especially with the closer, faster passages, you don't want the fingers to kind of bend inward. You want to keep them so they're curved. And actually my teacher makes me do this exercise where I um, make a circle and then push on each of the joints and then don't, don't let that happen. So that's actually a finger strengthener exercise that I do um, every day. All right, and we're gonna go back to the next line. in like a different style. Um, if we try to play it the same way all the time, we're gonna kind of get stuck in this pattern and it's not gonna feel like adventurous anymore. It's just gonna be kind of very robotic. So a way to kind of get out of that is to kind of explore like, oh, how would I make this into like a jazz tune? do this better in the third movement there's some more um, I guess bigger chords that kind of make it sound more more kind of jazzy okay so continuing on I'm gonna go to the top of the page so I'm kind of getting back into the story I have to remember this whole thing backwards I'm um, kind of jumping in the middle so I'm so used to playing it from from the very beginning, but it's it's good that I'm working on it this way. I'm not allowing my whole foot to cover the pedal because I don't want to sound mushy. And I want to bring out these, these melodic notes, these octaves. Right, if I brought everything out at the same volume, it would sound like this. Right, so it's kind of like 
adding spices to, to food. You don't want all the same amount of, of salt, pepper, sugar. You want to have your portions. So this is kind of like voicing. important to know is that you want to go past the bar line so you don't want to be a slave to the bar line you don't want your melody to always kind of you don't want to have to feel this this the, the where the bar lines are in the music when you play the music so I'm always thinking always thinking past the bar line because you don't want to just be analyzing notes on a page. You want to think about where is this piece taking you? What's the story behind it? What's... So you kind of, in a way, <laughs> you know, you want to get lost in that story as well. I mean, you don't want to completely just um, like leave your body and stuff, but you want to definitely have some sort of narrative um, because it's definitely, uh, there's definitely a story here. And yeah, let's move on to the next line. I mess up right there. phrases usually where the cadences are but I don't want it to be too wishy-washy
have these huge harmonies. Alright, so you have to kind of think about what to bring out and what to leave out. Because you don't want to all be the same volume, it's just going to be way too much sound. You know, because it's going to be preserved, this is going to go online, so I'm thinking about that as well. Um, but to just pretend that, like, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake, because a lot of the mistakes happen because you're too worried about playing it perfectly, that you end up, um, it ends up pulling your um, attention. Top of page 18. <laughs> sloppy I want to just make sure more going for accuracy at this point uh, sometimes I do work on a piece and I will go for speed and I will go for stamina and that way I will you know go go much faster but in this case I'm going for accuracy and um, getting the full note values <laughs> Sometimes it's 
good to start the measure right before? exaggerating. So I want that full sound here. decorative the longer notes are you know why would the composer make them longer they're going to be more important so I'm going to bring out the longer notes
then it finally cadences on the next page. So it, it feels like it's on unsteady footing. It's not really, um, it's kind of going through a bunch of sequences. I'm starting in the middle of something again as always so um, just trying to get right back into that narrative what's what's going on here
another thing I can do to kind of practice going past the bar line is I'll end on beat number one. So. Pause there. Pause there. because my other camera kept um, turning off. So um, I have a few more pages left of practice and I'm on page nine now. backwards. Just keep working backwards.
actually sounds pretty nice playing it slower. I'm actually, um, I think this piece gets played way too fast. And I actually think that a lot of the harmonies and the melodic stuff gets skipped over just because it's just played so fast you can't really hear it. So yeah, I'm practicing this piece and I'm just going really under tempo and making sure I hear all the harmonies, hear all the melodies, um, making sure if I make a mistake, I'm going right back, right back to exactly where I made the mistake, not back to the beginning of the page uh, or the beginning of the sequence, but right at that measure, maybe a couple beats before to kind of get into it. Okay. symbols and stuff like that so tempo wise um, is a bit flexible I'm just going you know more for accuracy at this point not so much for um, rhythmic accuracy as much so there's usually you know three things you can or actually two things you can usually focus on really well so um, getting the right notes um, and maybe dynamics and then if I add a third thing like getting the rhythm perfect, it might make it a little bit more tricky. So the less elements you kind of focus on and just focus on one or two things um, for this session, uh, the stronger it's going to be rather than trying to focus on three or four or five different elements. That's going to come later. Uh, once you stop thinking about all these things, that's when you can start adding the other um, elements. So, you know, there's melody, harmony, rhythm, and then timbre. More, more, it's more about melody, tam or melody, rhythm, and harmony in this case. Tamper is just the, the quality of what makes a piano sound like a piano. So, um, and each of those knobs can be turned up. So, you know, my melody, it could be very melodic, it could be very harmonic. Rhythm could probably be turned down. Um, Rachmaninoff uses a lot of kind of twos against threes, um, but the rhythm is not too, too difficult. I would say more. Uh, has to do with melody and harmony. Okay, so top of the page.
to try to play something at full speed just to see if I have the stamina for it. So let's try that. Sometimes I just challenge myself if I have the stamina, um, can I play the piece uh, a little bit faster. All right, next page. All right, so this point I want to bring out that melody here. This is kind of the introduction of the piece, so. disguised in these kind of kind of uh, different I guess they're not really arpeggios but they're kind of like little runs and so the longer notes are going to be your melody here Orchestra does have the main melody line. Dum, uh. So my my role is more of a supportive role at this point. Okay. Back of line.
more time just because it was a little bit sloppy. page, so I'm at the very bottom. getting too loud too soon that tends to be the thing that happens these are like bells right That's kind of how I would practice this piece from the end of the first movement to the beginning. And then after that, I would probably try to play the whole piece through from the beginning to the end. Um, so maybe I'm going to do that another time just because it's almost midnight right now. But um, yeah, think, some things to keep in mind. You want to, you know, play the full chord. You don't want to leave out any notes. You want to be able to hear all the notes that make up that chord when you're playing them. And I, you know, grab them and immediately relax. Um, especially Rachmaninoff uses a lot of really big chords. So playing and then grabbing them and immediately relaxing them so you don't get any tension in the arms and wrists. Um, playing with the, the weight of the arm, right? You don't want to try to muscle it. I always try to, you know, Horowitz always said play from your stomach. And so that was always a big um, thing that I remembered. Um, going past the bar line. So melodies don't just stop right at the bar line. They continue on. So music was written before the bar lines. Bar lines are kind of a visual way to kind of see how the music is divided up and it's a way to kind of rehearse things too oh let's start at bar five or bar 50. Um, so it's a way to kind of uh, mathematically divide them up into equal number of beats so but you don't want your music to sound mathematical or sound um, metronomic or caged in by the bars uh, also you want to remember that um, if you make a mistake, you want to go right to that point. So don't try to start at the beginning of the section. Just go right to where you made that mistake. And I think it's great to, to kind of go backwards just because it's usually people start from the very beginning and they know the very beginning really well. And they don't really know the ending as well. So when you start from the end, as you go through the piece, it's going to get stronger. And I think that's really important. So, um, yeah. That's about it. So if you have any questions, you can post them below, and I will try to record this on another day when it's not so late. <laughs>